Good afternoon. Welcome to Single Shot. Uh, this is going to be a little bit of a long video because I'm taking this this project from square one. Uh, a couple of uh, amendments for the uh, um, trimmer that I'm using here. I had a little problem that I ran into here a while back, and I figured a way to solve this, and I'm going to pass this on to you folks. This unit's all, all afloat right now, so she's all afloat. There's a white bushing on each one of those posts, front and rear, so there's four of them. And when you adjust this trimmer, if you go right up to it, you run out of trim space because these bushings run right up against the stops here. So you're not getting an accurate uh, consistency on your trim. Um, but what I have done to solve that issue, now i got quite a lot of brass to take off of here. I know there's other ways of doing it, but this is the way that I'm going to be doing it from now on, uh, is with this unit here. You've probably seen this before. This is the world's finest trimmer, but here's the difference between this one and the original. This one is caliber specific, it's set for 223 Remington, okay? I've got that one. So what they did is they made this piece, the centerpiece, interchangeable. So you could change to any bottleneck caliber. That's your cutter. That's actually what that is, is a milling machine end mill. That's what they use. So what you do... They supply you a small piece of doweling. You slide that doweling in there. And that's uh, in there pretty tight. Let me give it a few taps. See if we can knock it out of there. This is how you change your calibers. This is a, a multi purpose body. This, this body here. This is the chamber, as they call it. And what they do is they'll actually cut a bottleneck chamber top of this. This one is specifically made, if you can see that, for the 357 Herod. That's what I'm going to be doing today. So you take it like 30 odd 6, 243, 225 odd 6, any of the bottleneck cartridges. They make a chamber for each one of those calibers. So it's interchangeable. And it goes back down in. They go in tight. That's all flush. It comes out a little tight because it's brand new. I haven't even used this thing yet. So, a little piece of dowling. I use a small brass hammer. Okay, your end mill goes back into the unit. And there's the same two set screws on the side that you tighten to. Now, what I've got to do is I've got to use this trimmer, set that aside for a minute. I gotta use this trimmer to get one of the cases to my fixed length. That fixed length is 1.740. Okay. So we're gonna be trimming this master case to 1.740 right here. Oh, you can't see it, can you? All right, let's see if we can change that just a little. I'll get it right. Hang on. All right, now you can see the trimmer. This is the RCBS power power trimmer. Have I got that? Well, I haven't got it quite just yet, have I? That should have done it down at that next notch. Okay, now you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so you got this case already set into the trimmer, and I'm going to set these settings on this trimmer so that it will trim this down to 1.740. After I get that done, then we'll set it with 
this trimmer, once you set that trimmer, that, that uh, uh, world's greatest trimmer, number two, that's the one with the interchangeable chambers. Um, that's it. That's all you have to do. Once that's set for that one particular caliber, you got no problems. Now, the only time you have to change that, obviously, if you change caliber, you're going to have to change this. You'll have to change the length of the cut with this cutter. All right, let's see if we can get this set up here. Now, I've had to use another drive, another drill, because that is a half-inch cutter. My unit is unplugged, so I push that all the way in until it touches that. Nope. All right, we're still hot. Well, let's try that. Now, want that trimmer all the way forward so she don't go any further. So, that white bushing is right up against that stop, those two settings there. Now, this is where it changes. You've got to cut that thing quite a lot. So, your collar is loose. I'm going to set it coarse. We'll set it right about there. Now, there's wide, coarse, and fine on the adjustments on this thing. This slides back and forth and is locked down by three thumb screws. There we go. All right. So, that's all the way forward. That's up against that. I'm taking a guess with the setting I've got here. Once I get it close, I'll be using this collar. This is the course. So we pull that back, energize the cutter, and let's see what we got. Now this will take a minute. Now all the time, now, see I've already got that problem. That white bushing is right up against that. So I'm going to have to stop the cutter, pull that off, shut it off, loosen those three thumb screws. And boy, I'll tell you, when you tighten them things up, they tighten. They lock that trimmer down pretty good. <clears throat> there we go. All right, so that, that's all movable. So what we got to do is we got to set that collar. Right up against that. But I want to have my gap here between those, these two things here. Again, you've got a white bushing, sometimes they're black. And then you've got the frame of the, of the cutter base. That's right up against that base. You can't work with it like that. So I'll pull it back just a little bit. And in this case, where we're taking up so much more, I'll pull it back even just a little more. So... That's temporarily locked. I'm holding that lever. Now I'll take that stop collar, slide it up to that, and I've got probably an eighth of an inch of gap between those two components. So I want to pull that back just a little more, and that will give me approximately the same amount of distance between these two and this and the collar. So we're we'll tighten that down. We're going to take this down slow because there is a lot of cutting to do on this case. All right. Lever it back. Plug it in. Let's see what we got. It's a good cutter. It does a good job. But like a lot of things, if you're changing calibers, you've got to change settings on the machine to do it, just like a machinist would. And that's basically what we're doing right now. We are setting a lathe, basically that's what this is, to cut a certain length off these cases. And we're getting down there now, it's only about a sixteenth of an inch. My gap is almost done here. So that's going to stop cutting here shortly. I'll do that once in a while to break the chip.
All right, we're right up calling the base. This come right up against this. All right, let's see what we got for length here. I'll deburr this. Yeah, I tap all the crud out of it. In order to get a clean measurement, I'll do a dress cut like you've seen me do before in my previous uh, videos. So that's what you're looking at right there for the different difference. So that's still got to come off about three eighths of an inch. It's quite a lot. So I'll go back here and plug it again. I want to set my depth of cut again. Okay, that's going to go forward. This goes back. Now I'm going to I'm going to estimate that. We'll set it right there and see what happens. Loosen the, the uh, small collar, slide it right up to that point. And then you look at your gauge between here and here and slide this back. All the way forward. So I've got to come back just a little bit. I tightened that up too quick. about that far. Tighten that collar. Alright, see where I'm at now. Oh see I'm I'm still this is something I just discovered. So I'm still a little bit a little bit off about it. All right, so loosen that back up. That's good to go into that again. I want to come back about that far. Tighten that back down. It'll give me basically about another eighth of an inch. So, back here. Oh. 